After a lackluster Bristol race Saturday night, Denny Hamlin calls on NASCAR to make major changes to the next gen car. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. I hope your week is off to a great start. My Monday is off to a shaky start. Look, I love talking about racing. I love doing this show almost every single day. I love engaging with you all, a passionate community of race fans. I mainly like talking about what happens on the track. You know, some off-track stuff. I love silly season, contract drama, who's the best available driver for each seat. That's what I love talking about the most. And thankfully, 2022 has been full of that kind of stuff. 19 different winners, the best intermediate track racing I've seen maybe in my lifetime. We've got a highly competitive points battle with few clear favorites. Silly season, Tyler Reddick, Kyle Busch, Noah Gregson making moves. We've had an increase in attendance this year, lots of good stuff. So why is the leading narrative, the leading story this Monday, Kevin Harvick releasing this t-shirt calling out the crappy parts of the next gen car, in his words. Like, sure, it's funny. I don't have a problem with it. It's entertaining. Go for it, Harvick. Maybe this will help recoup some of the losses of maybe any secret fines he might have received in the past few weeks. I'm just speculating. I don't have a problem with it, but between Harvick selling that t-shirt today and Denny Hamlin's tweet this past weekend, the top stories here on Monday are not about what's happened on the track. They're not about the points foul. They're not about any of the fun stuff I just talked about. Instead, everyone's talking about the next gen. Does it need a complete overhaul? Who's gonna pay for it? What do we do with the short tracks? All very worthwhile questions. It just sucks that we're having this debate in the middle of a very competitive playoff fight. That doesn't mean this debate is unworthy of conversation. I'd argue it does deserve to be the top story here on Monday. I'm just mad that that's the case. I'm upset with reality. <laughs> so what am I talking about? The, the Harvick t-shirts are just part of it, but this past weekend after the race Saturday night at Bristol, Denny Hamlin put this tweet out. Remember, Denny Hamlin is not only a driver for one of the most competitive teams, he's still in the championship fight, but he also owns a race team now alongside Michael Jordan. Here's what he tweeted. We need a next gen 2.0. Just got to figure out who's going to pay for it. There you go. Denny Hamlin calling for changes to be made to the next gen car, not offering any specifics, but if we look at his comments he made during his post-race interview on USA Network Saturday night, we can maybe get an idea of what he's thinking. He told TV, quote, the next gen car was tough. I would like to see the racing improve overall. Some lap time variation a little bit. We're just running around there and it's like we're faster in the corners than we are on the straightaways. Just extremely hard to pass. We had some steering issues and it looks like our Toyota teammates also had steering issues. So it sounds like Hamlin talking about the quality of racing on the short tracks. That has been a talking point throughout this season. As I mentioned a few moments ago, the intermediate track racing on the bigger ovals this year has been I don't know, I'd say phenomenal. Some of the best racing on those types of tracks I've ever seen. The short tracks, somewhat surprisingly I might add, have not been as great this year. Martinsville in the spring was kind of a disaster. It was easily the worst Martinsville race I've seen. Bristol Saturday night was okay, but I don't think it met the high Bristol standards we've set for that track. So back to Hamlin's original tweet. We need a next gen 2.0, just gotta figure out who's gonna pay for it. I, I like this top reply from Dale Jr. of course, just a photo of Xfinity series cars. Hey, the Xfinity cars more often than not have put on pretty great shows at really a variety of racetracks the last few years. So uh, yeah, I get where he's coming from, I don't disagree. But what's actually realistic? I think first we should list out some of the major issues or problems that the next gen has faced this year. First, the change to a single lug nut, resulting in more loose wheels, wheels just falling off either on pit road or on the racetrack. We still see loose wheels almost every day, although credit to the teams, they seem to have figured out how to keep the issues contained to pit road. It seems like it's been a while since a wheel fell off on the racetrack during a green flag run. Second, there's the recent issue of you know, rubber building up and catching fire by the rocker boxes. NASCAR and the teams did implement some fixes to that in the last couple weeks weeks and it's only been like two weeks but we haven't seen a fire since so maybe that one's been mostly fixed. There are a couple issues earlier in the season that we really haven't seen pop up again lately like you know the flat tires causing cars to get stuck on the track that hasn't been an issue really in months. Shifting multiple times every lap at a lot of the shorter ovals, I guess that is still an issue. I know they've tried some things to try and mitigate shifting, especially for Martinsville coming up, but it sounds like they probably will still shift there. I don't think they shifted at Bristol this Saturday night. There was talk beforehand that maybe shifting would be on the table. I don't think it ever came to that. But many believe that shifting at some of these shorter ovals results in it being harder to pass. There's some other big issues out there like the rear diffuser. Is it actually having negative aero effects at certain tracks, particularly some of the shorter ovals? I think many of the drivers would say yes, 
this. They've been lobbying NASCAR to take the rear diffuser off completely for Martinsville in October. Not sure that will happen. There've also been steering concerns. I think we're on like number six now. Steering concerns with the next gen car. Back in testing, there are issues with the steering rack. It sounds like many of those got figured out. This weekend at Bristol, we saw a number of teams deal with power steering issues. Not sure if those are related at all. It was mainly the Toyotas that had that issue, but like Chase Briscoe of Ford said he dealt with power steering issues pretty much the entire night. So that's a problem. The biggest problem, in my opinion, is the way the next gen car crashes, the way it absorbs, or in many cases does not absorb, impact very well. That's a big issue for which there really is no just quick overnight fix in my opinion. That's going to take some new engineering, some new pieces, some new parts, some major modifications that may or may not be possible to complete during this upcoming off season. I'm not sure. But there, I just rattled off like seven pretty notable issues with the next gen. Some have been largely solved. Others still are looking for better solutions. Before we get to the who should pay for it part of Denny Hamlin's tweet, I want to share a quote from Brad Keselowski this past weekend that in my opinion, should serve as like the mission statement for the next gen going forward, especially over the next few months or years. Keselowski said after the race Saturday, I feel like, yes, I could pass. It wasn't easy, but it's not supposed to be easy. Would I like to see us continue to work on the cars? Absolutely. I've said this to NASCAR and I've said it to the media before and I'll say it again. If the next gen car looks the same as it does this year, then we failed. We should continue to grow. We should continue to learn. We should continue to make it better. Take that quote, print it out, stick it up on the wall somewhere at NASCAR HQ, words to live by. The next gen car is a long-term investment for everyone, not just the teams, the new team owners, but for NASCAR, like the sanctioning body. The next gen is way too important to NASCAR's long-term success and prosperity to let these major issues linger longer than they have to. So let's talk about who should pay for it. You know, Denny Hamlin's question on Twitter. The exact dollars and cents are not public information. I don't know exactly how much it costs to field a competitive Cup Series team in the Gen 6 era. I know it was many, many millions of dollars. The next gen is supposed to make it cheaper in the long run to field a full-time competitive cup series car because it takes a lot of the R&D stuff out of your hands. Based on what some of the owners have said, I don't think it's cheaper right now to run the next gen because you had to buy all the new parts for the first time, but in theory, over the next few years, it'll become cheaper and cheaper to be competitive. It's a long-term investment, like I said. Who should pay for it? I think everyone's gonna have to compromise a little bit, but on paper, at least, I think NASCAR should. They designed the car. Teams were somewhat involved throughout the process and certainly once they got to testing and found steering issues, overheating issues, et cetera, et cetera, the teams got involved and helped make some changes. But at its core, NASCAR and its vendors designed and built these cars, built the pieces at least, then the teams assembled them. But this is a NASCAR production and any design shortcomings, in my opinion, should fall on their shoulders. Is it realistic though that NASCAR, the sanctioning body, is gonna pay to make all these major changes? Changes that guys like Harvick, Hamlin, et cetera, et cetera, are kind of calling for. I don't know, NASCAR is weird. It's not like a lot of other major sports in the United States. All the teams, Joe Gibbs, Hendrick, Spire, are independent of NASCAR, the sanctioning body. Sure, they often work close together for the betterment of both parties. Sure, there are things like the RTA, the Race Team Alliance. But ultimately, all of these entities are kind of separate. I don't know what contracts look like, but to me, NASCAR owes it to especially the new team owners. Teams like 2311, Trackhouse, uh, GMS, Colleg, I throw them in there. Teams that have showed up in the last couple of years with competitive cars, competitive drivers, new sponsors in the sport, they owe it to those teams who bet on the next gen to go back to the drawing board and get it right. Again, I don't know exactly what each part costs, how much it costs to run a team today versus two years ago. What I do know is that the new car is far from perfect. It's done a lot of good things this year. Again, I hate that we're having this conversation in the middle of one of the most entertaining NASCAR Cup Series seasons I can remember seeing. But like Brad Keselowski said, we should always be trying to learn more, to get better, and there are some clear shortcomings. Harvick selling t-shirts, it's calling out crappy parts. You have Denny Hamlin calling for a completely new car. Martin Jurex Jr. flipped his car off Saturday night. The new car is not perfect. It, to me, it's worthwhile for everyone to come together, make the investments necessary to improve these certain areas. Everyone has already sunk so much time, so much money, so many resources into the next gen. What's What's a little bit more to make sure you get this thing right? We're not going back to the Gen 6. That's not a realistic option. We're not going to the Xfinity cars. I, I don't think that's a realistic option. The next gen is the car of the future. While some of the parts may have their shortcomings, overall, this new car has modernized NASCAR in a way that Gen 6 was severely lacking. 
The next gen is here to stay, but as Hamlin asks, who's gonna pay to make the necessary changes going forward? Interesting stuff. I look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comment section below. That's gonna do it for this episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new to the channel, we talk NASCAR almost every single day here on Out of the Groove. News, reacting to races, rumors, and much, much more. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future content. And as always, a big thank you to my Patreon supporters as well. We'll be back again tomorrow. Busy week. The round of 12 for the Cup Series kicks off in just a few days at Texas. Oh boy. It's gonna be the last Texas race for oh, like a year. Year, pretty much so we'll have lots to talk about though between now and then hopefully more you know, on track related discussions uh, before long but I uh, thought this was a, an important conversation to have some good questions being raised I'm really interested to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments below y'all will probably bring things to my attention I didn't even think of when kind of planning this video out so I look forward to reading those comments uh, and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode thanks for watching <laughs>